now we are becoming getting into a very critical part. Please understand we have not finished parliament as it is, because, but we have to mix up parliamentary government with the presidential and the other post. So first understand what kind of government structure are we following. Now under Article 50 of the Constitution of India, there is a very major concept which is called as the separation of powers. It is supposed to be the pillar of democracy. Democracy cannot function jab tak there is not a separation of powers between the three parts that is the executive, the legislative, legislative and the judiciary. This concept was a very famous concept, concept given by Montesquieu during the French Revolution if you remember. Okay, so you have executive, legislative and judiciary, three separate pillars, don't try and intervene but of course maintain a very good mixture. Okay, now in Indian system, because we have what is called as the parliamentary form of government, there is however a small problem here. This parliamentary form of government, whether it is the Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha, comprises of what are called as law making units called as legislators. Everyone agrees on this? Yes or no? Now this is something that we had discussed last time also if you recall. That in India the legislators are not only law making processes. Please understand, right? We are what legislators who are duplicating the role of the executors also. I hope you understand. Remember last time we had discussed this. So what is it? So within our parliament system, we have legislators. So all of us sitting in the parliament are legislators. However, some of the legislators will go back home and also go back to their offices and sign orders to implement these laws. Classical example? Union Council Minister. You are in the parliament. In the morning, in the evening, Mr. Arun Jaitley is sitting in the south block signing orders, right? You are the Ministry of Defence, you are also in the parliament making laws as any other parliamentarian, but then you are going back signing execution orders. So the Indian system is, some of us, our legislators, are duplicating the role as executors. In Indian system of governance, we have the union executive comprising of the president, who is the top executive, the vice president, and the union council of ministers headed by the prime minister. Article 52, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3, 4. I hope you remember this. Article 52, Article 63, Article 74 of the constitution. I hope you will never forget this. The 5, 6, 7, 2, 3, 4 is the ones which deals with the union executive. Article 52 describes there shall be a president. Article 63 describes there shall be a vice president. Article 74 describes there shall be a union council of ministers headed by the prime minister. These guys are what is called as the political executive. They are not permanent because every five years you don't know whether they will be there next five years or not because they are dependent upon elections. You however, if you pass this exam which you are about to pass, you will become what is called as the permanent executive. Either you will die or resign or will be kicked out until unless that time happens, you are a permanent executive, you are not dependent upon five year elections. Are we clear? You are the permanent executive, this is the political executive. The crucial part over here is that executive in this term, very carefully understand, executive in parliamentary form of government, whether it is political or permanent, is answerable to the legislation. Are we clear or not? Everyone has understood? That is called as a responsible form of parliamentary government. Say the word responsible form of parliamentary government. Contrast crack Barack Obama is not answerable to the legislature. Okay? So he is not answerable to the Congress over there. He is 
the head executive legislation is not, he cannot have answering of Barack Obama. Hence, that is called as the presidential form of government. In parliamentary form of government, executive will be answerable to the legislature. You just cannot have another power. So, I am not saying that over here execution, executive is interfering in legislature. No, that's what I am saying. I am saying some of our legislatures are duplicating the role as executive. Are we clear on this? Done, everyone? Okay. Now put the heading President of India and Closure Registers. Now, this is a long, long topic. Okay, most of our quality will be finished with President only. Because I think it will take three for us. Okay, we'll finish off the entire thing with this. Then after that, only formality and quality will be left. So we'll finish off the entire political setup only using the president over. Now okay. Now once I look at the president's post, it is a funny post in case of India. Because he is supposed to be the head executive. One, he is supposed to be the head of the state. Two, he is supposed to be what is called as a ceremonial head of the government. He is supposed to be, another word is what is called as the office of ceremony. These are all the words and titles used for president. But I don't think any of them justifies most of the things what he does. The reason to that is that the president is only a symbolic head. And that is why although he is the head executive, he is actually following the orders of what is called as the real executive. And the real executive is the prime minister. Are we clear on this part? So the true executive or the real executive is the Prime Minister. Now everyone please understand this entire lecture. Okay? This lecture will determine whether you understand quality or not. So end of facts, this class, today's class, probably the second last class on our quality part, etc. This will wind up a very important concept to understand. So now get this entire thing. This is the difference. So you are the real executive, you are the head executive. The real executive is called as real executive because he enjoys the, say the word, direct mandate of the people. Head executive is a head executive only because the constitution wanted him to be, but he is not strong enough because he is indirectly elected. A question has been asked critically remark whether the president should be directly elected or not. Why not? So, say the word. It's symbolic. Say the word. What, will be, what is the practical problem if he is directly elected? He will have what is called as a conflict of interest or an imbalance in power. Why? Because what is the only way we are making the real executive stronger? Why is the Prime Minister stronger? Because he has the direct mandate of people. If the President is also made elected directly, then he also enjoys the direct mandate of people. So what will happen? We are having a very strange relationship. What is the strange relationship? We have the top executive as the President, the real executive as the Prime Minister. So we have kept him higher but relatively weaker. We have kept him slightly lower but we have made him stronger. I hope you are understanding. The only reason to that is the direct mandate of people. The only reason to this is the indirect election. If I allow him direct election, I hope you understand he becomes a dictator. Okay, it becomes a king. I hope you understand. So you have to be critically remarking on this part that Indian constitution wanted the president to be only, use the word, friend, philosopher 
and guide. Say the word. Guide to the Prime Minister. So the President is only a friend, philosopher and guide to the Prime Minister or the real executive. You cannot give him powers enough to enjoy as direct mandate of people. There will be an imbalance, a conflict of power. Are we clear on this part? First write this. Okay. This question has come. I am only giving you a question. I am not taking anything else from anywhere else. Elections of the president. Now, again, close your registers. You will have to memorize all the points over here. So please be attentive as much as possible. Listen. Now listen. The election of the president, first of all, a very crucial question. The election of the president is conducted by the Election Commission of India. The returning officer or the officer in charge of this election are you people, but only when you become that level. You should be either the Secretary General of Lok Sabha Secretariat or Secretary General of Rajya Sabha Secretariat. In one presidential election, you will have Secretary General of Lok Sabha Secretariat as the returning officer. In the next, it will be the Lok Sabha Secretariat, or sorry, the Secretary General of Rajya Sabha Secretariat. So they will take turns. Now I am telling you real detailed points, so just please follow this one. So first of all, who is conducting the presidential election? Who is the returning officer? Secretary General of Lok Sabha Secretariat. Now, I want to become the president, I require qualification. 
The qualification is 35 LOC. That's how you remember. Okay. You should be 35 years of age. You should not be holding what is called as office of profit. You should be a citizen of India and you should have all the qualifications of being a Lok Sabha member. Kindly listen to this word. You should have qualifications of being a Lok Sabha member. I did not say that you should be a Lok Sabha member because you should be of no parliamentary member actually. So once you want to become a president, you must resign as an MP or MLA or for that matter any other government post. Are we clear on this part? So a president is neither a MLA, president is neither a member of Rajya Sabha nor a Lok Sabha member, a president is a president. Are we clear on this part? So what is the qualification? 25 years is qualification of being a Lok Sabha member. He should have no holding of any office of profit and he should be a citizen of India. The qualification of Lok Sabha member is given in Article 84 of the Constitution of India, just for practical reasons. Everyone is clear on this part? Now, I want to become the president, I will give my nomination. Now, it's not very simple to say I will give my nomination because this nomination must be supported. First of all, understand that who are my electors or who are going to vote for me. Whoever are going to vote for me are is totally called as the electoral college. What is it called as? <laughs> this electoral college will consist of crucially open your ears and listen. I said elected members of Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and all other Vidhan Sabhas. What members? Elected members. What members? Elected members. So are nominated Anglo-Indians a part of this? No. no. Is Sachin Tendulkar going to be a part of this? No. 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 Only elected members. Everyone is clear on this part? So again I am repeating. Baki sab confusion hunter chart jayega. Agar sirf ek word yaad rakhoge. It is elected members. So did I say Vidhan Parishads? No. no. So there are no member of legislative councils, there are no Anglo-Indians and there are no other nominated members at all. Are we clear on this part? Can we have first right? Sure. Anglo-Indian nominees elected Anglo-Indian nominees are elected. So, who is the returning officer? Returning officer is the one who conducts the election. Who votes for the president? 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 So, I as officers are not going to be a student politics.
these are the only two union territories these are the only two union territories which have representation in the electoral college next line bada bada likho the method of election of the president is called as indirect election by proportional representation all capital letters indirect election by proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote first of all indirect election by proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote ho raha hai ka sabko bolo indirect election again proportional representation again single transferable vote ye word pehle kaha suna hua hai ye tino mein rajya sabha mein usse pehle kaha suna hua hai constituent assembly i hope you recall that okay so we are hearing this for the third time now what is the method say the word indirect election proportional representation single transferable vote now listen everyone look up guys upar dekho okay indirect election kyu because you are not voting people are not voting who are voting your elected rulers are voting yes or no everyone yahan tak clear hai now what is proportional representation proportional representation means that every person's vote bachcha don't write you this will not come hold on every person's vote does not have equal value every person's vote is dependent upon the population which he represents what did i say every person's vote is not of equal value every person's vote will have a value depending upon the number of people he represents let's see how so we have a value system the value of an mla's vote first let's calculate you will calculate the population of the state or the union territory from where the mla comes divided by the number of mla's in that state or union territory into 1 upon 1000 kindly don't write mathematics apne aap se don't write what 1000 over here okay i know it arithmetically means the same but let's stick to with mr ambedkar okay so it is population of state of union territory divided by bolo number of mlas of states by 1000 please amma don't forget this word are we clear on this part everya this is the value of whose word mlas now look at value of mp's vote value of mp's vote is total value of the votes of all mlas divided by total number of mp's do minute is it okay hanji now hey everyone is clear what is value of mlas vote everyone will be here population of state or union territory divided by number of elected mlas of union territory or state into 1 upon 1000 value of mps vote is total value of votes of all mlas divided by total number of mps let me see your mathematical understanding which of this is going to be a constant value whose votes will have the same value mlas or mps MP, MP. I give you ten seconds. Use your maths. Second. 
इलेक्शन I have to achieve what is called as a quota. This is called as a quota. Now, what is a quota? Quota is total number of valid votes. Say the word. Total number of which votes? Valid votes divided by total number of posts plus one plus one. Let me give you an example. Total number of valid votes, for example, is 100. Suppose, how many presidents are we going to elect? One. one. So it is one plus one plus one. That is 100 upon two plus one. How many votes should you get? 50. Are you clear on this part? So you should at least get 51 votes if you want to win this election. You cannot have less than 51 votes. All right. I hope you understand. Move over. Clear on this? So what is it? This is the example of proportional representation. Why? Your value of the votes is dependent upon the population. You have a value of MLA's vote. You have an a value of MP's vote. You have to achieve what is called as quota. This takes us to the third point, which is called as single transferable vote. What is single transferable vote? What is single transferable vote? Let me give you an example. I don't think most of you know it. Usually, how do you elect people? You have three electors. For example, A, B, C. You go for polling. You say I elect him. That automatically means you reject these two. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So you are voting for one. That means you are taking out the other two. Okay. Here you don't do like this. Here it is slightly different. You say he is my first preference. He is my second preference. He is my third preference. Clear on this? So your the voter number one will do this. Voter number two will again say, "This is my second preference. This is my first preference. This is my third preference." Voter number three will so on and so forth. Will say one, two, and three, and so on and so forth. Are we clear? At the end of first round of voting, at the end of first round of voting, you will count only. The first preference votes. Are we clear on this part? Everyone has understood. So let us take an example. Let's understand that total number of voters were ten, and at the end of this, and there are suppose four voters. So this is the fourth one. This is also called one, two, three, whatever count. There are four nominees. There are ten voters. At the end of first round, suppose we get a result like four, three, two, and one. Who wins this election? Who wins this election? Why? What was the quota in this case? Should have been at least five, okay, or at least six. So who is winning this? No one. But who is losing this? Yes or no? Who is losing this is Pakka. Who is winning this is not yet achieved. All right. So this man is eliminated now, and now his second preference votes will be counted. So we'll we check that where he got his first preference, he got his second preference. His name was written on the ballot. Just vote pe. That second preferred vote will be transferred to, for example, A. Okay. So the second round of voting will happen. This time, not only adding. The second preference votes which A, B, and C have achieved, but also the transferred vote. I hope you understand. Okay, the losers' votes are not wasted; they are transferred to the remaining contenders. Are we clear on this? Everyone has 